Hey, I'm Mark Hamrock with Hamrock Music. This is the first lesson in a video series on songwriting, and I'm really excited because I'm going to be going through the process of writing several songs in different styles and then arranging, producing, recording, mixing, and mastering them. So you're going to see the complete creative process from start to finish. Make sure you subscribe to my channel to receive notifications for future videos so you can follow the development of each song. Before jumping into writing songs, it's important to know the different elements that make up a song, the commonly used different sections of a song, and how to structure a song. So let's start with the four elements that make up a song. Number one, the music. The music can be constructed using a chord progression, a riff, or both. A riff is a basic rhythmic figure that uses single notes and or some basic stripped down chords and is usually repeated. Here's an example of a riff I made up. Most songs written with riffs will also have chords in them as well. A good example of this is Nirvana's Come As You Are. The intro and verse have a repeating riff, while the chorus and bridge use chord progressions. Number two, the melody. The melody is the sequence of notes and rhythm that the singer sings. It's definitely the most important part of the song, and I'll be discussing what makes for a strong melody in other lessons. So definitely subscribe to see those. Number three, the lyrics. The lyrics are the words being sung using the melody. I'll also have other lessons on writing great and effective lyrics. Number four, the rhythm. The rhythm is the beat, groove, or strum pattern of the song. It's actually not as essential to defining the song because you can change the rhythm and the song will still be the same song. One exception to this might be in rap or hip hop. So as an example, let's take the song Happy Birthday. Here is a good visual representation of the different elements of Happy Birthday shown in a typical chart format. The music is shown as a chord progression above the measures. If I play that by itself, it sounds like... You don't immediately recognize it as being Happy Birthday. The melody of the song is shown in musical notation on the staff, represented as notation. If I play that... Right away you recognize Happy Birthday. In fact, this is what everybody sings, or tries to sing, at a birthday party, typically without any musical accompaniment. The lyrics are obviously the words, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear blah blah, happy birthday to you. So if I put it all together, then it sounds like this. The reason why I said earlier that the rhythm is not as essential of an element is because I could change the rhythm and it would still be the same song. I could play Happy Birthday in different styles, let's say reggae. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear blah blah. Happy birthday to you. Country. or even punk rock. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear blah, blah. Happy birthday to you. When writing a song, which element do you start with? Any of them, whatever works best for you. Typically, songwriters start with a music or a melody, or even both at the same time, and then write lyrics to fit. If starting with just the music, then you want to write melody to the music and then lyrics to the melody. 
if you came up with a fantastic melody singing in the shower and want to turn it into a song, then you could write chords or a riff that fits the melody as well as lyrics. You could also start with lyrics. In fact, lyrics have a natural rhythm to them, and if you can suss that out, that's half the melody right there. You just need to come up with the notes. In a future lesson, I'll have someone send in lyrics, and then I'll illustrate writing a melody and music around those lyrics. So now let's take a look at the different sections of a song in modern popular songwriting, starting with the most important. The chorus. Don't bore us, get to the chorus. The chorus is typically the most intense or energetic part of the song. It will have the hook of the song, which is the most memorable part that everyone sings along to. Usually the song title is sung as a hook in the chorus, like in Sweet Child of Mine or Uptown Funk. I'll get into writing effective hooks in some of my future videos as well. There's typically multiple choruses in a song, a lot of times using the same music, melody, and lyrics. Sometimes there might be slight embellishments to the melody and small changes or developments in the lyrics between the different choruses. Generally though, you can write one chorus and use it repeatedly throughout the song. The verse. There's usually multiple verses in a song which all have the same music and melody, but with different lyrics. Think of the verse's job as telling the story of the song. The bridge. Take me to the bridge! Eh. The bridge is a section somewhere in the middle of a song that is different somehow and breaks up the verse-chorus form. It can use the same music as the verse or chorus with an instrumental solo over it, as was typical in the 70s and 80s, or it can be a completely different section of music with lyrics and a melody. A pre-chorus is a separate section of a song with lyrics that allows the song to more smoothly build into the chorus. A couple of examples of songs that use pre-choruses are Nirvana, Smells Like Teen Spirit, and Katy Perry's Fireworks. So these are the main sections of a song, but some other commonly used song sections include an intro, short for introduction, this would be an instrumental beginning to a song, an interlude, which is a short musical passage, you see these a lot as a reinstatement of the intro right after the first chorus, a tag, in modern popular songwriting, a tag is a repeat of the hook of the chorus. You see these at the end of the last chorus, sometimes numerous times. I'm going to be using a tag in my first songwriting example, and as I'll illustrate, it's always good to change each repeat a little to avoid monotony. A song that uses a tag is Eric Clapton's Tears in Heaven. An outro. The opposite of an intro, an outro is the ending of a song. Okay, so let's put these sections together. The most common form or structure used in modern popular music is intro, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus. This is a tried and true song form that keeps the listener engaged. Just like movies typically have a three-act structure, popular songs tend to follow some close variation of the structure, sometimes with a repeat of the last chorus or outro to end the song. If you weren't aware of this structure in popular music, Definitely keep it in mind in the future when you're listening to music, and I think you'll be quite surprised how often it's used. Although this is the most common form, it's certainly not set in stone. There are all kinds of variations to the structure. For example, you could have a pre-chorus before the chorus, so that might look more like this. Intro, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, bridge, pre-chorus, chorus. Again, these are the most commonly used structures in modern popular music. Doesn't mean you have to stick with these though, as I'll show you in some of my other videos. So now that you know the different elements and sections of a song and how to structure it, be sure to check out my other songwriting video lessons. Please like and subscribe if you find this info useful, and I'll catch you later.